Okay, so I thought I would uh, post a follow-up to my previous video which was recorded uh, 27th of December 2023. Uh, it is now 23rd of March 2024. I am still here in a hospital and have um, been getting uh, somewhat better with this CIDP condition. Um, so I guess the condition had continued to degenerate a bit through January this year. So at uh, basically a low point, um, I'd pretty much lost all movement in my uh, hands and feet. I, I can no longer operate a computer mouse um, or really move anything except my my head. Um, I was also having a bit of trouble uh, swallowing food. Um, so I'd had a, a, a video x-ray, I think, in December um, which was, was really quite interesting, where they'd given me a barium-laced food and drink and uh, take this x-ray of my uh, esophagus and, and mouth in, in real time so you could see how the uh, food and, and liquid was being swallowed. And uh, it's, it seemed that there's a... Uh, um, a sphincter of some kind at the top of the esophagus that uh, opens to allow food to, to be swallowed and that was not opening fully every time so occasionally the food would sit there uh, and also the, the uh, peristalsis in the, the esophagus wasn't working properly at the top to um, push food down, down there and uh, my tongue wasn't working normally to, to push food back in, in the mouth either. Uh, so um, I'd, I'd uh, occasionally uh, have trouble swallowing larger portions of food or larger pills. Um, and uh, I was being very, very careful to only swallow uh, portions that, that I could that I knew I could swallow. Occasionally I would just have to stop and, and spit something out or rinse my mouth out. So I really didn't want to end up aspirating um, any food. Um, I think one time I did did aspirate a pea and uh, managed to um, blow that back out again some hours later, but uh, I avoided that. Um, I was uh, it's also having a lot of issues with phlegm building up, which I really had as a child. I, I used to get uh, bronchitis inevitably after getting a cold, um, and I'd be constantly sneezing uh, uh, mucus and, and uh, getting getting phlegm in my airway and bronchial tubes, which I'd have to cough up to produce all this phlegm. And really hadn't seen that since since I moved away from my childhood home and, and its associated uh, allergens and, and puberty and, and whatever. But um, that had come back when I was lying in bed, particularly lying on my back. Um, so that made it you know rather difficult to, to sleep. So I had a choice. Uh, lie on my back and, and get a lot of phlegm building up and start having trouble breathing or uh, lie on my side and have my uh, shoulder go to sleep or, or and, and wake up from sort of in a, in a twisted position with a sort of cramps and stuff which is quite uncomfortable and, and then you know want to call somebody to get straightened out or moved or whatever so uh, we got some foam wedges so, so I could lie 
on those at an angle of, I don't know, 10, 15 degrees. Um, so a sort of compromise, um, which I'm st still doing. We it started off, I was lying against a, a piece of luggage and then a, a large foam wedge. And then we bought uh, some shallower angle wedges at this better angle. Um, so now, uh, yeah, in March, um, most of the problems with phlegm seem to have all gone away, which is great. And, uh, so I've been able to, to sleep much better on uh, on this angle and, and not wake up in the middle of the night, not have to be moved, which is good. Um, so I continued, I had the, the uh, single session of rituximab back in I guess that's back in November now, that, uh, once a week for four weeks. Uh, so that repeats, that's going to repeat in after six months, which should be around May. Uh, I've also been having the IVIG once a month, which again has been having less and less effect. Um, I think I'd had one in December where I, about two days after the treatment I got quite a bit of strength back in my arm that I could then raise my arm above my head and then two days later it's gone away. Um, I had two more treatments since then which have had again sort of less and less effect. Um, so the last one I had um, probably three weeks ago now was sort of almost an unnoticeable effect, no positive effect on the other hand. Uh, things have not been getting worse. They've been very slowly getting better. So I've now got uh, ability back to work the computer mouse. Uh, on some days I can lift the weight of my forearm against gravity. Um, other days not. I got a powered wheelchair, which I'm just back out here. Will oh, you see that? Yeah. So I can work the joystick on that quite quite easily now. Um, when I first got it, I was unable to keep my hand on the joystick if it fell off, and I was unable to. Uh, turn the wheelchair on um, and if I didn't can move the joystick for uh, 15 minutes and it would time out and turn off so um, I'd set a timer on my phone so, so I could uh, just poke the, the joystick occasionally so um, yeah, for a, about a week now I think I've been able to turn the, turn the wheelchair on um, I, I've been getting you know, a little bit more strength back. It's not always better from day to day. You know, maybe Monday I can lift my arm, Tuesday I can't, Wednesday I can, Thursday I can't, Friday I can't, Saturday I can. But uh, the general trend has been upwards. So, so I have uh, some uh, optimism that it will continue to get better and I'll be able to do more um, yeah do more things um, I've been seeing uh, rehab um, people who were they, they seem to have been keen for some time to get me to do more exercises but I kept saying well if the nerves don't work then there's no point um, so now that I have some nerve function back then there is some point. Uh, they'd also, um, you know, point out that, that just moving my limbs around is good. That if, I, if they don't move, they can basically, you know, seize up that muscles and tendons and joints will shorten, and the range of limit range of motion will be limited. So, I've occasionally been doing stretching exercises to, uh, to uh, straighten my my knees out for a bit, or bend my, my arms up uh, to, to um, 
you know, fully closed the elbow joint, for instance, and uh, they um, they tried to get me to to sit on the side of the bed uh, a few a couple of months ago on on the air bed, which was pretty much a disaster because you know that's well it was sitting on it sitting on an air bed it just wobbles so I, you know, I couldn't support my weight off balance at all and uh, and then uh, they uh, tried me on a, on a more solid bed um, which was was better but now I can pretty much you know balance myself in the wheelchair sitting up there's no no problem there with with my torso I've been trying to do some uh, sit ups and you know bends and stuff to build strength in my uh, back and stomach back a bit. Um, so I've lost a substantial amount of weight from my uh, from my legs and, and elsewhere. I think it's probably about at least twenty kilos now. Um, I uh, measured my weight you know, with and without a wheelchair a month or two back. That was. Uh, I think I'd lost 15 kilos at that point, and I assume a bit more. Um, so uh, hopefully I'll be able to put a bit more muscle back on. Um, the rehab guys that recently uh, set me up with this uh, fancy uh, electronic bicycle thing where um, they're attaching electrodes to uh, muscle groups all, all over my my upper body, arms and shoulders and biceps and so on and um, the uh, computer control is able to trigger uh, muscle contractions uh, to match uh, cranking motion of the, this bicycle thing. Uh, it has uh, upper and lower cranks and uh, so far I've just used the arm cranks but, um, so I, I can contribute effort from the, the muscle muscles that I can um, that I can affect uh, affect myself and uh, the machine is able to, to um, stimulate the muscles that, that I can't work so well and so it, it can generate a, a cranking motion uh, you know, kind of like a steam engine by, by triggering the muscles as they would normally be used. Um, so they're saying uh, I can go and use that machine on the rehab floor uh, next week or something. Um, so far they, they brought it down to the gym in, in this in this floor in uh, neuroscience. Uh, um, so yeah, I, I forget if I mentioned the, the bed that I've got. It's uh, this airbed thing like a lilo which is uh, except that it's designed to leak so there's a constant weeping of air from the upper surface of the bed so it, it um, provides uh, a bit of airflow when I'm lying on it uh, it's, it's driven by a, a quite a, a quiet fan system uh, which which also has um, this pulsating characteristic that, that it's uh, over a period of some minutes it uh, inflates and deflates sections so there's a, always just a little bit of movement so that the, this has a, a double effect that the, um, as, a, as an airbed it's distributing my weight evenly across the, the whole area and it's also moving slightly so, it, so to prevent pressure sores uh, which is otherwise an issue if you just lie for months um, so that has, has worked really well. Um, the other thing I get is uh, um, an intramuscular in injection every day of a, a blood thinner, I forget the name, which is supposed to um, reduce the risk of blood clots again from just lying still for, for weeks and months. Unfortunately, I can't move the camera around to show any more in this room. I, I got moved into a, a, a private room a couple of months ago, which has been really nice. Um, so 
Um, so I'd been avoiding having to sleep because of these issues with the phlegm and that discomfort. Um, I typically want to sleep from midnight through till 7.30 or something in the morning and the food arrives at 8. Um, but in the, the shared ward, uh, they wanted to turn the lights off at 10 and for other people to get some sleep. Um, whereas I wanted to spend as much time awake as possible and use voice recognition on my phone, so I wanted to talk continuously. Um, so to some extent, you know, I would disturb other patients and uh, and then their, their care and uh, needs that also disturb me, um, that uh, if somebody needed to be checked on or, or called in the middle of the night, um, aides or nursing staff would come in and turn the lights on and do things and talk to them and so I'd wake up and then I couldn't get back to sleep easily and um, it's you know, generally been I think better for all of us that I have the, the private room. Um, it would have been nice to uh, have some conversations with, with the other patients but as it works out uh, the most of the patients were um, stroke victim victims who come in with some cognitive impairment and aren't really making sense. And then uh, they fairly rapidly get get better over uh, four days, and then they move out again. And uh, we'd occasionally get get people with multiple problems, uh, dementia or um, confusion, and. Uh, I know it's just talking or yelling and not really making any sense, so I uh, really only had decent conversations with about four or five different patients in like three months, which seems a bit ridiculous, but uh, that's, that's what it was. Uh, I think that is all at the moment. I was going to try and get some video or screenshots of how the voice recognition works on the phone, but I uh, haven't been able to get that to go for some reason at least. I can't work it myself through the voice recognition and getting somebody else to run it. I can't remember how it works or whether it even worked, ever worked on this phone. I certainly used it on a previous phone. Anyway, I will try that at some point.